Hello, welcome to the SMS Kitchen. So we're in the middle of a coronavirus um, and it's going to be a time of testing. Testing our ability to pull together as a community, testing our ability as individuals to be kind, um, but also testing our abilities to be frugal. And I'm hoping that today's vlog will uh, give you some tips on how to manage um, in, in the SOS kitchen. Uh, the kitchen where nothing goes to waste, that waste is forbidden. So I'm not going to cook a recipe today. I'm not going to look for something magical to do with apple skins or um, avocado bips. Um, I'm going to show you the contents of my freezer that might give you some ideas on how to best use your freezer going forward, making sure that your waste does not end up in a bin, but ends up in a beautiful recipe in your tummy. So here we go. I'll be backwards and forwards. First things first. So I'm just going to pick things randomly from my freezer and we'll explain how I might use them. Um, this is a piece of plastic that came from a bag of pears. So as kitchen, we don't buy cling film, we don't buy plastic sandwich bags. If we have to have plastic in the house, and sometimes we do, um, because you can't avoid plastic, then the plastic I use is never single use, I will reuse it over and over again. So in this bag, I have got asparagus ends. Okay, clipped off, I'm not going to use them uh, in the asparagus tart that I made. Um, oh, I'll get onto that in a moment. Um, and these will keep in the freezer until I'm ready to make them into an asparagus soup. We will do that by making a vegetable stock, um, adding the asparagus in, putting it through a liquidizer, putting it through a sieve, adding, you know, um, vegan butter, vegan cream, or ordinary butter or cream, salt and pepper to taste. Now, the, the uh, vegetable stock, all of these, uh, oh, not all, but many of these ideas are already on the vlogs previously. But vegetable stock, some of you who follow the SOS Kitchen will know that I keep a box of peelings. I don't throw my peelings away. Um, cabbage, garlic, uh, tomato tops that I haven't used, onion skins, everything. Everything except uh, pepper pips and pepper stalks, um, as in green, red pepper, etc. Um, because they make it bitter. This thing gets boiled up with a litre of water, salt, pepper, vegetable stock. I simmer it for a good hour to get all the flavour out. Sim it through, push it through with a ladle. Um, beautiful vegetable stock. Add the asparagus uh, tips in, uh, cook it through. As I said, asparagus, vegetable soup, marvellous. Tip number one or two. Ah, so, we've got two glass jars. This contains dry wine that was left over. This contains sweet wine that was left over. Both will go into recipes. This one, I'll take a large spoonful out when I'm cooking anything that needs um, a dollop of white wine in it. The sweet wine, I haven't decided what to do with yet, but it may well go into a sorbet, possibly. We'll see, but that's in the freezer, ready to use. Ah, yes, something else in the freezer. Well, everything in the freezer is waste not want not food. So in here, again, another reusable, no one single use plastic bag. So this has whole little tears in it. Um, but in here, I keep leftover a stale piece of bread, some stale rice crackers, um, a little bit of uh, tortilla that, didn't, that went to waste. These, and when this, well, the bag's pretty full, so I might do that today. These will get um, put through the food processor and broken up into breadcrumbs. But no, who needs to buy breadcrumbs? I can make my own. Ah! Dry white wine, sweet white wine, red wine. In this case, I've actually popped it into little cubes so that they can just pop out easily. Um, I think it's three tablespoons per cube. Um, but there we go, red wine. Never throw that away either. Now, some of you may remember the fromage fort recipe we did after Christmas where we used lots of leftover uh, cheeses, mixed it with some wine um, and garlic and mould it into a sausage and then we just slice a bit off when we want it. I've used it on garlic bread, I've used it on fromage fort mushrooms, I sometimes put it into a soup. I've got very little left, little bit in the jar there, fromage fort, but actually that, because it's so garlic and cheesy, a little knob of that in the asparagus soup might go down well. So that's been going since Christmas and we're now into March. Oh, 
obviously. One keeps leftover foods. So in here I've got some sagaloo, a lentil sagaloo. When I make another curry that I've got sagaloo already made. Some spicy tomato sauce, I didn't use it all, so I've kept that in a little pot ready to use again. And I made up some mashed potato and cabbage and kale and spinach. Um, specifically the kale and spinach were added because they were going a bit soft in the fridge and so they weren't really good to use on their own. So they got mixed up with some cold, uh, mashed potato to make cold cannon. Um, bubble and squeak patties if you like. Um, so I've still got some of that left. Um, so a deep, quick defrost and there's a few meals there. What else? fresh coriander in the winter so I bought a frozen one okay that's fine um, I reused the pots over and over again in here I also have rosemary in the garden chopped up a load of rosemary at Christmas so this has got rosemary in it um, just make sure you mark the top so keep reusing the pot and this in this case it's frozen rosemary I mean this is great you literally just pour it out frozen rosemary okay use it straight into the dish don't have to defrost it I always freeze my ginger and I don't peel it. There is no need. When I want ginger, I put it straight into the grater and grate. Little bits of the skin go in. Makes no difference. I defy anyone to tell me that I've peeled it or not peeled it when they eat the dish. Always keep your ginger in the freezer. It'll keep for a year. chicken kievs. My husband's not vegetarian or vegan, um, but I saved one and refroze it and it'll froze it and so that's ready to go a bit later. Um, I've got some biscuits in there, um, which I just keep on hand in case somebody comes around who likes a biscuit, but they keep great in the freezer and you can literally pop them out in 10 minutes later they're ready to go. Um, similarly, I've got some slices of chocolate cake, which take 30 minutes to defrost and you've got some chocolate cake to offer people. So I've got all that in the fridge. Last two tips though. Um, this is... This looks like more white wine. It's not. This is egg white. Um, normally, I write on the top how many. I've written on the side here. Um, four egg whites in here. Um, I don't often need, need an egg yolk, perhaps to make lemon curd. But when I do need a, an egg yolk separated, I never throw the white away. It goes into this pot. Now, four is my maximum, actually. This is going to make a huge pavlova. Um, but, um, so if I was going to save any more... Uh, egg white before I use this up I'd start a new pot actually three is pretty much all you need but I've got a bit mad on this one done four but certainly three to four is your maximum pot in here interestingly um, it's all taped up I don't know why maybe the lid kept popping off um, I was given some um, uh, blood oranges um, from a friend and I made a blood orange tart to tan and there were about three or four of the oranges that are really quite squidgy um, going over to be fair so I don't know if any of you know Nigella's clementine cake where she boils up clementines for a few hours literally and lets them go cold whizzes them with almonds and sugar um, and makes the most wonderful gluten-free um, uh, clementine cake well this is what I did with the blood oranges I boiled them up I pureed them nothing in them no sugar nothing it's sitting in here um, ready to make into an, a blood orange almond cake at some point using Nigella Lawson's original recipe. Although there are many other recipes out there on the internet. Um, so that's it. Um, don't throw anything away. Even if you think, well, I don't know what to do with this. I've got two little bits of beetroot left. Pop them in a jar. Um, at some point, you might decide you want to throw some beetroot into uh, red onion soup. Um, there is always room to open that freezer take something out and use it in a recipe and never ever have waste again if we use this time of the coronavirus when we're not at war with each other we're all at war with a single unseeable uh, enemy and we all want the same outcome we all want people to survive and be well 
If we can learn from this experience, learn to be frugal, learn to fly less, learn to look after our planet, learn to look after each other, if we can do that, then the whole coronavirus outbreak will not have been a crisis or a catastrophe. It will have been a blessing. Get yourself looking down those vlogs on the SOS kitchen. Get yourself being frugal in the kitchen. Start using up your leftovers. And I do wish you well. Keep safe. Wash your hands. See you soon.